So we are discussing this reading by Himanshu, Inequality in India. So this is the another kind of inequality which we are looking at, inequality in the labor market. So he says this that this inequality in labor market is arising because of the skewed distribution of workers across sectors. One. And the differences in quality of employment. Two. If you look at skewed, uh, skewed distribution of workers across sectors, he says is that you look at few sectors, for example, agriculture, 50% of the labor force is employed. You look at unorganized sector, 93% of the workforce is employed there. And these are the sectors in which you experience fall in GDP, right? Their GDP share is falling. And on the other hand, you have the sectors such as IT, you have such sectors such as finance, you have sectors such as real estate, telecommunications, the fast growing sectors. The share in GDP is also rising. But unfortunately, they are employing less than 2% of the workforce. So the sectors which are employing huge workforce, they're not growing much. The sectors which are growing much, they are not employing huge workforce. They're employing a very minuscule part of the workforce. Right. And because agriculture, unorganized sector, they are employing more people, but their share is not increasing. Their GDP share is not increasing. So the productivity in these sectors are low. Well, if you look at the productivity in the non-agricultural sectors, like IT, finance, telecommunications, their productivity is very high because whatever GDP they are creating, that is distributed among less number of people because only less uh, uh, proportion of the workforce is employed there. The another kind of inequality in the labor market, uh, and, and the reason of inequality in the labor market, it could be seen from the point of view of the quality of the workforce. So if you have the informal sector, informal uh, employ, employees more in the sector, they do not have any social security benefits. So the quality of employment is not good there. They say this, that if you look at... Uh, uh, 93% uh, of all the workers, they are the informal workers. So from this only you understand the quality of employment. Huge workforce is unemployed. Oh, sorry, is, is informally employed. I'm sorry. And uh, not only that, in agriculture, in, in organized sector, in organized sector, in 1999-2000, only 38% of the workforce in the organized sector was informal workers. While when you look at the proportion, the same thing in 2011-12, you find this that around uh, this 56% of the proportion of the workforce employed in the organized sector is informal. In, informal employees. Quality of Employment is low. And most of the employ most of the informal sector employees they are more concentrated in the private sector. So by quality of employment, also you understand that uh, there is inequality in the labor market. Authors they also estimated uh, inequality based on distribution of factor incomes and workers. So initially they found out the share of profits and workers from the NAS data and employment and employment survey data. And what they found, first of all, is uh, that if you look at 1993-94 and 2011-12, uh, you find that the share of profits, they have increased from 7 to 15%. So they have more than doubled. But as far as wages are concerned, um, Wages accruing to cultivators, they have uh, fallen from 25% in 1993-94 to 14.6% in 2011-12, right? So that share of wages to cultivators, that is falling. Then you look at the uh, share of workforce, which is employed in agriculture and uh, the salaried workers. So if you look at the movement <clears throat> of the labor from the agricultural sector, they are moving towards self-employment, 
they're moving for casual work, they're moving to some non-farm casual work. And the regular salaried workers, you know, whether they, uh, and this was the same time period, 1994-2011-12. And uh, for the regular salaried workers, whether it is private or government salaried workers, that share has remained more or less constant, right? So now you have the share of profits and wages, you have the share of workers in the total labor force. And then they calculated the inequality based on that. They said this, that if you look at 1993-94, then the highest growth in the per capita income is seen in the private salaried class between these two time periods and the government salaried workers. They have seen that. Uh, the uh, If you look at the uh, share of uh, the workers in the agriculture, after 2004 and 5, there has been some increase in their, in their wages also. Uh, but uh, not much. Right, of course, they have. Uh, um, they're still very less as compared to the private salaried workers and the government salaried workers, right? Um, Vakula Bharanam uh, has also confirmed this. So there was one more study. They said this is the rural elite and the urban elite. They are getting much more as compared to war workers and. Uh, Rural workers and the farmers, as compared to rural workers and farmers. This is what they say about the share of workforce employed in agriculture and the salaried workers. Uh, so in terms of inequality, you can say that inequality has increased from 1993 to, to 2004-05. In 2004-05, there has been little catching up by the agricultural workers, but not much. Even within the rural and urban, you will find this, that rural and urban elite, they're getting much more as compared to the rural workers and the farmers, right? Then they say this, that, okay, let's look at uh, the annual survey industries data and the wages and profits based on that. So again, there is a very interesting point which they talked about. They said this, that... Uh, if you look at the worker wages and the managerial wages, let's say, they are almost moving in tandem. They're moving more or less in tandem uh, till 1980s. But after that, what has happened is that uh, uh, from early 1990s, that is at the time of liberalization, there has been a divergence. So the managerial wages, they have increased almost tenfold while the worker wages, they have increased by less than four times. So he is showing you inequality based on different measures. And then he also talked about the, uh, about the wages and the profits shares uh, in value added uh -huh, as per ASI data. They say this, that if you look at 1980s, uh, the wage share was 30%, profit share was 20%. In 1990s, of course, the profit shares it started increasing and wage share it started falling. Uh, in 2007 8 profit share, it increased to its peak of 60%. Right? It increased to its peak of 60%. This is a net value added. Uh, even um, after the financial crisis of 2008, there has been fall in the profit share, but it is still around 50%. Uh, the share of value, share of wages and value added, they say they have been falling. Profits are increasing. Even in financial crisis, when the share of profits have declined, they have not declined that much. But the share of wages have declined. During the same period, uh, the share of wages have declined in value added to 10%. Right. So 
by everything they are trying to say that the share of profits have increased, share of wages have decreased. Regular salaried and private salaried workers share have increased, rural workers and agricultural wages they have fallen. Right. Uh, so this is what you will have to write in this entire series of article. So what you will you you have seen inequality from various angles from monetary angle, from non-monetary angles. You've, you've seen inequality across social groups and you've seen inequality based on the distribution of the workforce and the share of wages, value added, that is factor ownership also. So this is what I want to do in inequality. So read your question very carefully, which kind of inequality they're asking. Just you read inequality and you start writing Everything what you have learned uh, in this reading, that's not the point. Just answer what they have asked. Read it carefully. So make your notes properly. Right. So I hope. Thank you, Beta.